What's up YouTube? I got an unboxing video for you here today. A uh, new package just arrived from DLT Trading. And I'm going to open this up with the uh, Demco AD 20.5. Uh, this is the uh, 3V version that's exclusive to Knife Center, uh, which I uh, did a scale swap on. Open this up. <clears throat> Set my paperwork aside. I got a DLT sticker and some packing paper here. Put that aside. Got two knives here. Hinderer knives, made in the USA. Okay. Um, so this is the, uh, here we've got a little sticker. It says this was the 2018 Blade Show Min Most Innovative American Design. Um, this is not a 2018 knife, though. This is a 2023 release exclusive to um, DLT Trading. And it is the uh, XM18 3.5 um, with no choil. So let's have a look. There we go. Uh, I've got an orange one. And... flat dark earth one or brown I'm not sure actually if that's considered it's XM18 3.5 slicer no choil try away stone wash bronze flat dark earth G10 um, in terms of case candy looks like we got some goodies in here We've got a Hinderer Knives sticker, a 35 sticker, hand assembled and tuned. For instructions on how to put, how to change out the triway pivot system, go to YouTube Hinderer Knives. And then here we've got uh, washers. So I assume the caged ball bearings are what is uh, currently in the knife. Uh, but it has the ability to accept different uh, different things in the pivot. All right, so let's have a look here. First, the flat dark earth one. Okay, and bronze anodized, that's this side. That is bronze anodized titanium. Blade steel on these turned out to be CPM 20 CV. On the announcement for it, it, it just listed what Hinderer had used in previous releases. So it wasn't exactly clear which blade steel was going to be on this release until it actually dropped. Uh, okay, and so this one is the stone washed finish. Very nice action. Very comfortable handle despite not having a troil. Okay, so we're not, not using the uh, finger troil up here as some hinderer knives do. We've got a little more edge. A little more sharpened edge. All right, let's see the orange one. And that is orange. It is bright orange. And this one has what's called a working finish. Just a little darker. Okay. 
Okay. Interesting knowing. Good action. All right. So there's the two different finishes that I got. Stone washed and working finish. Which is much less reflective. Okay. And then here's the difference in the titanium side. Gorgeous. Um, some size comparisons. Let's do some size comparisons. Oh, I feel bad. It feels almost inappropriate even to put it in the same frame as the hinderer, but just as a point of reference for size, let's say Ontario Rat Model 1 and Rat Model 2. Okay, about the same length blade, about the same amount of sharpened edge as the Rat 1. Um, we're going to compare one of these to a uh, another frame lock. Let's see what we have that would even be remotely comparable. Um, here's a Spider Coast way back. Okay, this is a frame frame lock as well. Uh, not as uh, much going on in terms of hardware and little details, but uh, nice simple frame lock titanium handle. Um, similar length blade, but a much different blade profile. Also from the same designer, we've got the titanium frame lock Spidey Chef, which has a smaller blade, but with a lot more belly. Okay. Uh, again, just for purposes of size comparison, I'll show you a, a PM2 and a pair of three. Okay. Let's get this angle a little straighter for you. Um, how about a Benchmade Griptilian? It's got a little, little bit bigger blade than a Griptilian and a bug out. And we're going to look for a uh, another overbuilt, beefy frame lock. Maybe something like the Lion Steel SR11. Okay, that's a drop point frame lock folder. This is aluminum instead of titanium, but it does have the uh, sort of backup locking mechanism there. Um, quite a bit bigger channel uh, around that frame lock and not as deep, not cut as deep, you know, into the length of the handle um, and quite a, quite a big, quite a lot larger relief area here in the uh, hinderer. Um, Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, in terms of finish, I think this working finish is really an interesting uh, look. I don't have too many knives that compare. I wanted to see if I had anything that was similar to that. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of the uh, the finish on the Case Marilla, but uh, it's more consistent. Right? And you can't see the machining lines as much in the Hinver, which we would expect a little bit higher fit and finish since it's, you know, more than three times the price. Um, it also reminded me a little bit of the, uh, the finish on this, uh, mass drop Cyrus, which is a Robert Terzuola design, um, uh, manufactured by Wii. Let's, let's look at those two finishes together. Yeah, there's, they're, they're kind of similar. And then if we look at the stonewashed one, let's see how that stonewash compares with, uh, well, let's look at the, uh, the stonewash on the pair three, which is a little bit more mirrored, more reflective, I think. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe it's pretty similar. This is the current generation in uh, S45VN. Okay. Uh, and what about the uh, Maximo from MKM? This also has a stonewashed finish. This is also a Robert Terzuola design. It's also a titanium frame lock clipper. Um, yeah. Well, I will have more to say about these Hinderer knives. Uh, this is just an unboxing and size comparison first impressions video. Uh, my first impressions are, it's a really, really, really nice knife. Um, very comfortable. Uh, I was not sure how I would feel about not having a finger troil, but um, it's extremely comfortable without a finger troil. And I feel like I have good control of the blade. I mean, I can't really choke up in the same way that I could if there was a finger troil, but I can bring my thumb up the, the spine a bit. Yeah, if I wanted to do a little bit more controlled work, or I could put a finger on the back of the spine. And the spine is nice and broad. The jimping doesn't extend real far up the spine for that kind of work, but um, this is a slicer, right? Um, Again, let's look at that finger troil. I'm sorry, the, uh, let's look at the frame lock. And one of the things I don't like about the Maximo is that it is, uh, it's a little hard to close the frame lock. Uh, it takes quite a bit of, of effort and that's due largely to the fact that there's just not a large relief area here. Compare that to the hinderer. Um, this is much easier to open and close. Well, to close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, once you get up into that price part point, I mean, these, these go, the MSRP on these, when they were in stock for the very brief period that they were in stock was $420 or for $425, I think. Um, and uh, something like this goes for under 200. Um, and if you're trying to compare the differences between a 
you know, sub $200 knife and an over $400 knife, uh, you're going to be looking at details. And uh, pretty much every point of comparison uh, that I can see favors the hinderer, um, as it should. Nothing wrong with the Maximo uh, as a knife in its price point, but uh, you can really tell the difference when you pick up a knife that, first of all, it's just balanced just about perfectly. Um, So there we go. We've got our two XM18s, XM18 3.5s from Hinderer Knives. All right. Thanks.